Hello, this is the Trade Site Stocks and Futures Index Market Preview for the week beginning Monday, May 13th, 2013, ending on Friday the 17th, which will be options expiration. We're also going to look at the economic roadmap, data roadmap for the week, take a look at what data is coming out that we need to be aware of in our trading. Here's a look at the S&P to start with. Again, had a 13 sell signal from the seeker here a while back and quickly breached the risk level. Once again, once you do that, it usually leads to a run, and we did get a push up. Although this last week, just the last five days, we were breaking it last Friday. The last five days have been fairly contained. So we're now seven bars up for a new setup phase. Here's the uptrend, this blue line that we've been watching for a long time. We did fall under it in early April, but got right back above on the retest. And now we've actually extended a little further above the line than we typically have here. It's pretty much a channel, though. Hard to, hard to dispute that this has been a channel since November. So we're going to keep an eye on uh, what's going on on the S&P at all times, but so far still no confirmed signs of any sort of rollover. Here's the NDX of the NASDAQ 100 index. Okay, And you can see that, again, this one's got a new closing high for the year. Finally, nice push up. Let's take a look at the SOX semiconductors. Again, nice new closing high for the year after that breakout back at the beginning of May. We're now in the seeker count. We're five bars in. Which is nowhere near a sell signal there. Biotechs now. Take a look. There's the risk line, the pink line from that 13 sell signal. You just heard the alarm. That's the pink risk line from that sell signal. It's been a while. If that gets broken, then the 13 is no longer in play. Market trend, signs of strength across the board has for a while. It's continuing to do so. So, again, stay focused on what happens intraday. But you'll notice that when the market's in a firm uptrend like this, when we do get sort of a down day like we did Thursday, you don't really get the trading opportunities that you'd like, even if you have a decent range in the day. The downside is limited because there's not really setups on the individual stocks. So until you really start to get that downside move in the market, the shorts are limited in their action, their plays. Even when you get decent setups, you can't expect them to go far. Meanwhile, the longs continue to work and a lot of breakouts this week that worked very, very well. So overall, a good trading week for us this last week, particularly in stocks, particularly on Tuesday and Wednesday. If you can get two or three great trading days a week, you're really doing well. Here's a look at the Apple daily chart. This rolled over. You can see it had a very contained week. Take a look at Rich's uh, recap of his Apple call from back on the earnings. Uh, also can be found on YouTube or in our uh, newsletter for the weekend. But he basically called this move from the earnings the run up. Uh, from the, the second bar of the, of the nine bar setup phase all the way back to this green static trend line. We've now stalled out, starting to roll over here on the Apple. Remember, there's a lot of overhead supply on Apple. It's not going anywhere high anytime soon with all this overhead. Let's take a look at Google. Remember, Google's got their uh, big conference this coming week, new closing high at 880 on Google. This is seven bars up now on the seeker count. So again, be aware of this on Google. And if I actually show you uh, the comer, what you're going to notice is that as we head into this uh, convention of theirs, we are now, and I'll turn the seeker off for just a minute while I do this, we are now 10 and 11 bars up on the comer. So we're approaching a 13 sell signal on the daily chart. Google hasn't had a comer signal for a long time on the daily chart, so let's be aware of that. Timing is going to be about right. Keep, keep in mind that conference starts on Tuesday, so two more days could get us a 13 sell signal right at the time the conference begins. You know, it's the buy the rumor, sell the news type of deal. Let's take a look at Amazon. Look at some of our popular stocks. Amazon, pretty mid-range, not a lot of activity since that 13 sell signal back in January. That's been the high exactly so far. Let's take a look at Netflix, another one we trade frequently. This one's been pretty dull since the uh, last earnings report. Not a lot of signs of anything new and exciting here in the market, are there? Um, Despite the fact that we continue to push higher, a lot of stocks just sort of hanging in their ranges, except for maybe Google, of course. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look now at the economic data that's due out this week. This is for the week from May 13th to 17th, as I said. A um, lot more data than last week. Last week we kept joking that it was a, a dataless week, essentially. This week that's not the case. You got uh, Monday retail sales and business inventories. Uh, retail sales is before the market. Not a huge number, but enough that it could make a little gap. Tuesday, you've got import-export prices. That's not a big deal at all. But then Wednesday, MBA Mortgage Index, PPI, Empire Manufacturing Index, Net Long-Term Tick Flows. 
industrial production and capacity utilization. Now that's all before the market. Then the NAHB housing market index and crude oil inventories Wednesday. Thursday, our usual weekly initial and continuing jobless claims data. That number has been improving the last few weeks. CPI, one of our big three every uh, month, could cause a gap. Housing starts and building permits. And then Philly Fed, 30 minutes in, be aware of that number. That can move the market. And our natural gas inventories. And then Friday, just Michigan sentiment and leading indicators. So much more data to, to chew on this week. We do not have earnings, but again, the focal point for the week will be that this is options expiration week. Now keep in mind, they've, they've started over the last year or two giving options that expire more frequently than just the third Friday of every month. So I'm going to have an article soon about the lessening impact of options expiration, the traditional third Friday of the month options expiration. However, we're still seeing uh, commonly the uh, options unraveling move on the Wednesday of that week. So that's this week, and if we get an options unraveling move on Wednesday, that would probably make Wednesday the more exciting trading day of the week. Uh, we're heading into the summer months now. As that starts to happen, uh, the afternoons tend to, can get a little bit slower. We may only have a couple of afternoons where anything's going on, and certainly uh, Mondays and Fridays are a little bit slower. Fridays in the afternoon in particular really dry up. We saw that uh, today on this Friday, uh, the 10th. And uh, so just be aware of that. Don't overtrade a market that is not moving and force yourself to do things you really shouldn't be doing. Uh, but in general, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays are, are the institutional days. Those are the days where we try the hardest as well. And uh, I think this week, Wednesday, probably maybe Thursday, the good trading days with options expiration. We will be calling it in the trading lab as we see it. Hope you have a good week.